Good morning, everybody. Welcome to In the Kitchen with Tally Faye. Hope everybody's having a good day. It's beautiful out there. And crisp and cold. It was really cold yesterday, wasn't it? We got snow. Did y'all get some snow yesterday? That was fun. Those big old puffy flakes. It wasn't flakes. It was like little snowballs falling out of the air. Anyway, it was wonderful. I loved it. But uh, today, I'm going to show y'all a uh, quick thing to get going. Uh, like if you're going to church this morning or whatever and stuff, you can get this pot of beans going if you wanted to in a crock pot. I'm going to do mine on the stove this morning just because but you can absolutely do this in your crock pot the same way and stuff. So uh, what I've done was I got another ham bone. I had me another ham bone in the freezer. So I'm going to take this uh, one pound bag of, I'm going to do pinto beans today. I did the uh, Great Northern beans last time. So today we're going to do a pound of these pinto beans. I'm just going to put them in my colander and take them over here to the sink and I'm going to rinse them off real quick. Rinse anything off. You used to have to pick beans when I was a kid. Uh, Mom would have me sit down at the counter and pick them and stuff because they'd have rocks and dirt and stuff in them, but you don't seem to find that anymore. Uh, I guess the machines are better and stuff nowadays or whatever, but uh, they still have dust on them and stuff, so I like to I like to just wash them off real quick. So let me run and rinse them off. That's all it takes, just a a little rinsing in there, and I just swirl them around and rinse them off with the running water and stuff in that colander. And then um, I'm going to just put them in my regular old six-quart pot, my trusty six-quarter. I use so much. We all use this pot, I believe. When you have a family, this is the pot you use. It's just the right size. So now I'm just going to dump my beans in here. They're washed and ready. I'm going to take me an onion. Get over here and pull it a little closer. Okay. Get me an onion here and I'm going to cut the ends off of him and just peel him down. I like to get some onion in there and I'm gonna put that ham bone in there. That ham bone is frozen straight out of the freezer. So I can just drop it in there when I get ready. And uh, we'll just chop this onion up. I like lots of flavor in there. Trying to keep from making it fly off everywhere. This is a, a medium-sized onion, I would say. If you don't want onion in there, don't put it in there. No big deal. I just like onion. I like to cook with it. But if you don't like onion and don't want it in there, well, just don't put it in there. It's no big deal, really. Oh. All right, now I've got my, my onion in there with my beans. I'm going to... I have my ham bone sitting out here that was from the freezer. It's one of those spiral hams. See, it's still got ice on it and everything, but it just got meat all over that bone. And we're just going to just put it down in there just like that, okay? Let me get this stuff out of my way. I'm going to take it over here and fill this up. You want to cover your beans really well with your water. You have to watch them because you will be having to add water along the way because they absorb that water and swell up and you'll cook them dry if you're not careful. See, here's where I'm at on it. I've got, I've got that much water in there. It's a big old pot. So I'm going to put my seasonings in here. Let me show you what I'm going to do with it. I put my ham in there, and if I'd have had some bacon, I would have put me some bacon in there, too. I like bacon in mine. However, I've got bacon grease. So, 
I'm just going to get me a big spoon of my bacon grease and just plop it in there. And that'll give it some good flavor. Some of that good smoky bacon flavor that I'm looking for in there. I'm going to put me a little bit of garlic powder. Now powder. I'm going to do the powder. Because, you know, that ham's in there and uh, it's we know ham is salty, so we have to watch that. But you still, I still want to add me a little salt, so I'm just doing like a pinch. You know, you just have to kind of guide yourself on that. Be careful with it. Don't stump your toe. If you uh, want to put your salt in there, go ahead and put you some, but don't put uh, too much because you can add, but you can't take it out, right? So just put you a little salt in there and later on taste of them. You have to taste of them and see. And another thing is, I love these kind of things. This is just... I don't have any one in particular that I like the best. Let me see if you can see that. But I love these pinto bean flavorings that you get. Uh, I got this at one of those little festival deals or whatever. And it says on this thing, use one to two tablespoons to one pound of beans. Well, that's a one pound bag of beans. Well, you see what I got left in there and everything? We're going to call that two tablespoons. It's a big two tablespoons. We're just going to put it in there. Mm, it smells good. It smells so flavorful. I love that. I'm going to leave this salt over here because I'm going to show y'all something else here in a little bit. But there's some garlic. We have our garlic, our salt, our onion, our ham, our water, and our beans in there. And that's all I'm going to put in there now. And I'm just going to get it over here and get it on the stove and let them be cooking. They'll just cook all most of the most of the morning and everything i will get them up to uh boiling and then i'll just turn them down i'll stir them real good and then i will uh, turn them down and watch them and just let them simmer and stuff i'll probably put, i'll put the lid on it for a little while and stuff i like to do that let the flavors all cook in there steam in there with it a little bit and stuff but uh, later on, when they start, after the beans are kind of starting to starting to get soft a little bit, I like to take my lid off and let the pot liquor start getting a little thicker and everything. And you still add in your water, but you know you gotta you have to kind of watch it and just play that by ear a little bit. But most everybody knows how to make pinto beans, it, beans period, right? But um, anyway, that's gonna be worthy of uh, having tonight with our supper i'm going to make these uh things my cousin showed me later on i'm going to show you it's called barbecue cups and i just felt like that was something that uh you might your kids just might eat you might could talk them to eat into eating that so we're going to do these barbecue cups after a while i'll do another video on that we're going to do this pot of pinto beans with ham in them and then uh i'm going to show y'all uh coleslaw we'll do a little bowl of coleslaw on the side. And that's kind of a good way to try to get your kids to eat some kind of vegetables and stuff, right? Um, if they won't eat the coleslaw and everything, I would suggest getting a little tray of like pickles and cheese and stuff out on the side. Uh, most of them will, you know, most of them will eat pickles, right? You know, so just put that on the side with it and get them to eat that with it. So, you know, that would be a, a little relish tray per se or whatever that you could get them to nibble on some of that. and. Maybe you could talk them into eating some of these good beans with the ham and stuff in them. But this coleslaw is really good. It's sweet and tangy and stuff. And sometimes you can talk them into it. But we're going to do that. So, I'm going to take my... Uh, the beans are cooking now, so we're ready with that. And I have me like a, a quarter of a head of coleslaw, I mean of cabbage, which will work perfect for Buzz and I. I'm gonna cut the heart out of it here a little bit. Don't take much. I'm gonna trim some of this off just to get it to the side. I like, we like to do this because it gives you, you know, we like something fresh. You know, you, you have to, uh, you have to kind of train your kid's palate to, uh, liking fresh vegetables and stuff on the side like that, you know? If they're not used to eating them, they just, you know, for one thing, they don't know what it is, and for another, you know, they they, they don't know what it really tastes like, you know? 
So it takes a while to get them to eat some of these things. They're not going to eat all of it, but some things you'll be surprised if you can just get them to taste of it and start eating stuff. And you have to make it. All right. Let me get my one little carrot here peeled. I don't know. I don't. To me, the carrot is just for color. I don't know. Maybe you do taste it in there, but um, I just always like to do it. It don't look right to me without that little orange speck in there, right? You know, if you don't have a carrot, you don't have to ha put it in there. You do not have to put it in there. Um, now, as far as cutting your cabbage up, you want to cut it up uh, really uh, thin, you know, and that makes it that much more crispy and stuff. So, I mean, I'm just cut it in quarters and I'm trying to get over here. Where you, I just want you to see that I'm just shaving it almost. Just shave it off of there with your knife. You see how see how thin that makes it? Like that. And that makes it like really crispy. Mmm. That's good too. I love cabbage. But it doesn't take long. Like I say, this is just a little old quarter of a head of one. Because I used the other, uh, I'm trying to remember what I made with it. I can't even remember now. Probably the pork chops, pork chops and cabbage. I'll have to show y'all that. Y'all might just like that. That makes a nice big old deep skillet with a pack of pork chops and your cabbage cooked in it and some onion and stuff. And, uh, make you some cornbread on the side with that. That works really, really well. So we're gonna get this done here. If I get me a big head like that, I like to uh, take the leaves off of the outside. See, okay, now I'm gonna chop it a little bit like this here, just so it's in more little bite sizes, a little bit better, because it's good and thin and crunchy. Like I say, if you slice it thin like that, it'll make it crunchy better. And we're going to get this. Finish up on that. And we'll have this made and in the refrigerator and out of the way for after a while, for this evening. Now you can, if you don't have cabbage um, in your refrigerator and you are wanting to uh, make coleslaw for company or something like that or whatever, you can, when you go to the store, buy one of those big bags of the already cut coleslaw. It's chopped up pretty and it's got the, I think it's got like the, you know, it's got all that other in it, like the purple cabbage and the, uh, you know, your green cabbage and stuff like that in it and everything, and it's it's chopped and ready. Then all you got to do is make your dressing, which I'm fixing to show you that. Okay, we're chopped and ready there. Let's see, this will make the perfect little old size bowl for Buzz and I. I'm going to cut that carrot off of there, and I'm going to get... My little trusty grater here. And like I say, really and truly, this is just for, I just think it's for color. But I'm just going to grate it in there. Watch your fingers. You don't want to grate a piece of your finger in there now. Don't think I hadn't done it. <laughs> I swear I'm lethal with a knife in the kitchen to myself. I'm always cutting my fingers because, again, I'm like a bull in a china shop. I'm not very gentle. But see, that's all it takes to make just a little bit of color in there. See? All right. That is ready for us to put the dressing on. So, mm, piece of carrot. All right. Let me get us a bowl here. We're gonna stir this up. So, what we're wanting here is we're gonna get us a half a cup of mayo, real mayonnaise now, not not salad dressing, 
real mayonnaise. And real mayonnaise. Here is our half a cup. Get this out of here real quick. And it doesn't have to be precise, precise, I would say. But you know. Get it in there and all right. There we go. There's our half cup. I'll put that in there. Okay. Now we have two tablespoons of sugar. One, two, two tablespoons of sugar. We're going to get one and a half tablespoons of lemon juice. Fine. All right. There's one. We're going to call... We're gonna call about a half point. Okay. Now we need one tablespoon. I've already got it measured up in this little thing. One tablespoon of vinegar, the white vinegar. And y'all, I love apple cider vinegar, but I'm not gonna put it in here. I'm gonna use the regular, but I love the apple cider because it's uh, so much more pungent. And I'm a flavor hog, but you can. Uh, you can. I'm just saying you can use the apple cider if you like apple cider flavors in your in your vinegars and stuff. But anyway, that's white vinegar in there. All right, we're going with half a teaspoon of pepper. Half a teaspoon. Black pepper. And we go round and round trying to find the grind we like on this. I think that's just a preference for people. I, I discovered I kind of like a, like a medium grind. But, okay, and then we're gonna do one quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Again, remember I call that a pinch. That's a big pinch, but we'll measure it just for grins. There you go. All right, that's what we're fixing to whip up and put on this. You stir it up in there, get it good and creamy. And you know, depending on how much cabbage you put in there, you know, if you had to make more, if you cut up more than just a quarter of a head, say like you were having company, and you did half a head, which that makes a lot of coleslaw. You'll be surprised how much it'll make. But this makes more than you think, too. But if you, uh, what I started to say was, if you know, if it doesn't look like enough dressing for you or whatever, make this make this same recipe. And if there's uh, uh, some left or whatever, put it in a little old jar, put it in the refrigerator. You can use it again. It's, it's great on a lot of other things. It's got a really sweet, tangy flavor to add to different recipes and stuff. So we're just going to take it and put it over here. And of course, uh, the longer it sits in here in the refrigerator today, by this evening and stuff, all the sugar and everything and all the, the granules will have uh, dissolved in there and soaked up in it. And so we're just going to toss it like this in it. Toss it around. And that'll be pretty. Something good and sweet and tangy and fresh and crunchy on the side with your barbecue cups and your big old bowl of beans and maybe a little relish tray, like I say, on the side if you wanted to. And uh, I just may come up with some kind of dessert, but I'll have to figure that up. And what I'm going to do is just put it right back in this bowl that I stirred the dressing up in. I just needed this big bowl to uh, be able to toss it around in there. So now I will put it back in here. And we 
are good to go. So we've got our beans cooking and our coleslaw marinating. I'll put me a, a cover over this bowl and set it in the refrigerator. And I will come back after a while when these beans are done uh, and we will make those barbecue cups and figure out what we may just make for dessert and have us a wonderful supper this evening. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you after a while.